AQA, A-level physics, energy levels and photon emission. Uh, this is the bits of the specification that I will be looking at in this video. So consider this, you've got a, a particle such as an electron or an alpha particle, whatever, and it collides with a neutral atom. Now what's going to happen? There are three things that might happen when this electron bangs into an atom. Now, it depends on how much energy the particle has. If it has a very small amount of energy, then it will just bounce off uh, and there'll be an elastic collision. For example, if two atoms in a gas bang into each other, there's just an elastic collision. Nothing special happens. Kinetic energy is conserved. Uh, the last case, the bottom case, if the particle has lots of energy, then it will ionize the atom. Now, ionizing means it knocks off an electron and creates an ion. What we're going to talk a lot about in this video is the one in the middle. If it doesn't have enough energy to ionize it, but what it does is it excites the atom. The atom becomes excited. OK, the ionization, one of the outer shell electrons in the atom is knocked off. Basically, it's given enough energy to escape. The electrons in an atom can't go anywhere. OK, they're attracted to the nucleus. They've got kind of it's a bound system. We say they have negative potential energy. If they we give them energy, then they can escape. And that's what may happen here. They may be given enough energy to escape. This creates an ion pair, a positive ion and another electron. But let's talk a bit more about this excitation and emission. So uh, the first atom on the left is snoozing. It's got minimum energy. It's got no extra energy. We say it's in its ground state. Yeah, it's lowest energy state, it's ground state. So we bash it with something, it becomes excited. We've given it extra energy. It's like a wobbly jelly. And it doesn't like being like that. It wants to get rid of that energy. So it gets rid of a packet of energy by chucking out a photon. So we have excitation where we go from the ground state up to a higher energy level. And then we lose this energy by emitting a photon, a packet of electromagnetic radiation, and that's emission. What's happening inside the atom? Well, now that the atom gains some energy, not enough to ionize it. The atom is excited. The atom loses this energy by emitting a photon and the energy of the photon. We did this in an earlier video. E equals HF. H is Planck's constant and F is the frequency. So E equals HF. Now, this is a very simple energy level diagram. Uh, you can think of the energy levels as like the shells. You might remember in GCSE chemistry, you've got your first shell and your second shell and all that stuff. You can think of it that way if you want to. Right, so we have the ground state is E1, the lowest energy level, and then a higher energy level, E2. And inside the atom, uh, an electron inside the atom goes from the ground state up to a higher energy level. Again, you can think of it moving further away from the nucleus, if you like, in one model of the atom. So excitation. An electron inside the atom gains energy, goes up to a higher energy level. Then later on, at some time in the future, usually pretty quickly, it falls back down again and we emit a photon. And the energy of the photon will be E2 minus E1. It will be equal to the difference in the energy levels. Now, hydrogen. Hydrogen is the only one that we look at in A-level physics because it's the simplest. 
and it is the simplest because a hydrogen atom only has one electron okay so if we excite hydrogen by maybe banging it with loads and loads of electrons which happens in this this tube here this discharge tube we've got hydrogen gas at low pressure and we bang the hell out of these hydrogen atoms with electrons uh, it produces light we look at the light through a diffraction grating and we see that we get these colors okay and this is called the emission spectrum of hydrogen now this is the light that hydrogen emits when it's excited and some important points about this very definite colors of light are emitted we don't get a, a continuous spectrum like Roy G Biv okay we get line spectra we get definite colors with hydrogen there's a red line we call that hydrogen alpha and then there's a green one and a kind of bluey one and a kind of purpley one and all hydrogen atoms have the same spectrum if you saw this spectrum that's how you would identify it as being hydrogen it's like a barcode every element has its own barcode and this is the barcode for hydrogen it's the emission spectrum for hydrogen so this is an energy level diagram for hydrogen and you'll see it's a bit more complicated than the other one because there's a lot more levels so there's n equals one which is the ground state and then n equals two n equals three n equals four etc etc all the way up to n equals infinity now when we <clears throat> when we excite an atom uh, an electron jumps from a lower level to a higher level uh, and then emission when an electron falls from a higher level to a lower level uh, a photon is emitted and the energy of the photon and hence its frequency uh, is equal to the difference between the energy levels and this is an energy level diagram for hydrogen and that is why we only get definite colors why we only get definite frequencies because the energy levels are fixed a few notes about this um, the energy levels I've given you the energy in electron volts hopefully by now you know that one electron volt is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 joules so if you want it in joules you would multiply it by that to get a very small number in joules if you're given the answer in joules and you want electron volts then you divide by that um, the energy levels are negative because if an electron actually did escape then we would say well it's got zero potential energy so an electron on one of these levels has less than zero because it's trapped it's in a potential well yeah it can't escape so the energy levels are negative it's like it's in a hole in the ground and it can't get out so the energy levels are negative if an electron manages to get to n equals infinity then it's off it escapes uh, notice that the energy levels get closer together and right at the top there there's there's lots and lots of energy levels very very close together up to n equals infinity we're not really interested in them by the way we're only really interested in in n equals one two three four maybe five they're the ones that we're interested in the levels aren't random there's actually a very simple little equation um, it's the energy level is equal to 13.6 divided by n squared um, very simple relationship it's all actually to do with standing waves but we'll worry about that later uh, when an electron falls to n equals one so if I get my pen out if an electron went to from there to there you'd get a visible photon if an electron went from there to there now that's a big jump so that photon is going to have lots of energy in fact any fall down to n equals one 
is going to give you an ultraviolet photon. Okay, those photons have loads of energy. The visible ones, the visible spectrum that we were talking about, uh, are these drops from there to there, from there to there, or I believe from there to there is visible as well. Okay, uh, all the little drops here uh, are actually uh, infrared. Yeah, they're invisible. So here's a very, very typical exam question. Make sure you can do this. Pen, paper, calculator, have a go yourself. And I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. There you go. So level four to level two. So the difference in energy, 2.55 electron volts, 4.08 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Uh, and then for the wavelength, well, we've got E equals HF, uh, where F is C over lambda. Uh, rearrange that, so lambda is HC over energy. Uh, that works out at 488 nanometers. And looking at the spectrum, I reckon that's going to be the green one there, the hydrogen beta 486, so green. Now, atoms can also be excited by absorbing photons. And just as they emit very, very definite wavelengths, they will absorb very definite wavelengths. In fact, the same ones. So if you have white light passing through a gas, then that gas will absorb particular wavelengths and it will re-emit them at some point. Uh, but we get this thing called an absorption spectrum, which is a continuous Roy G biv, but with black lines. And from the black lines, we can figure out basically what elements are involved. Yeah, what barcodes are involved. You know, what can we learn about stars by studying their spectra? Well, loads and loads. We can basically figure out what they're made of. And if we know what they're made of, there's, we can work out how old they are, what type of star they are, what their temperature is, loads of stuff. One thing you need to know, which is, a, a, there's lots of little steps. It's not hard, but there's quite a bit to remember. How do fluorescent tubes work? Well, uh, looking at the diagram, you've got a, a cathode. Uh, so you put a voltage across the tube and you get electrons emitted from the cathode, which accelerate. So you've got fast electrons. A large voltage is put across the tube. Electrons are emitted from the cathode, okay, from the negative terminal. These electrons ionize some mercury atoms. So you've got mercury at low pressure and these electrons bash into the mercury atoms and some of the mercury atoms get ionized and that gives you even more electrons. So you've got loads of electrons which accelerate because of the voltage. Uh, and then all of these electrons excite other mercury atoms. And when mercury uh, emits stuff, it will emit lots of ultraviolet. So you've got loads of ultraviolet photons. On the inside of the tube, there's a white powder, a fluorescent powder. Uh, and basically that, the atoms in that powder get excited. Uh, and then what they do, they get excited to very high energy levels, but then they lose that energy bit by bit by bit by emitting visible photons. So they get excited to a very high energy level and then they lose that energy level, not all in one go, but they go from, you know, a high to a lower, to a lower, to a lower, to a lower, emitting lots of different wavelengths. Uh, and we get something that looks like white light. There's enough different colors in there for it to look kind of white, but it's not a continuous spectrum. If you look at a fluorescent tube with a diffraction grating, you'll see that you don't get a continuous spectrum. But there's enough colors in there for it to look white. 